very warm good evening to all of you uh, and thank you so much for joining this evening's webinar on cloud adoption and cyber revolution i think this is an appropriate topic for all of us to understand how cloud adoption has changed the way that cyber and cyber security related uh, aspects have increased in its uh, in its uh, prevalence and uh, the importance so uh, on behalf of reva university and reva academy for corporate excellence i am dr shinu abi welcoming all of you to this webinar on discussing this interesting topic before we introduce Sandeep Vijay Raghavan on the topic. Let me take a minute to introduce Reva University. Reva University, located in Bangalore, is one of the top-ranked private universities in India. We are located towards North Bangalore in a very luscious green 45-plus acres campus with 15,000-plus students and 2,000-plus teaching and non-teaching staff. We offer a series of programs ranging from pre-university to PhD in almost all the disciplines. The majority, the focus being engineering, technology, as well as management and humanities. Uh, we, this, this webinar is brought to you by Reva Academy for Corporate Excellence, which is a entity within Reva University has been for the past four years offering courses on emerging technologies for working professionals and organizations. So we customize programs in some of the select areas and have impacted almost 1000 plus working professionals and organizations today. We have an ecosystem with an amazing list of industry thought leaders and industry partners who have been helping us to build this series of programs that which we offer. We not only do uh, open programs, which are masters mainly or postgraduate programs, but we also do customized programs in select areas. But our focus being developing, creating enterprise leaders in techno functional uh, skill sets. So brief glance on what we offer here are one of the major focus areas or rather two areas where we focus in our programs is AI as well as cyber security. We have been pioneering AI and data science education for corporate education and all our programs have been ranked top 10 in India by various ranking agencies. And this is not a small feat considering that how demanding career transition for a working professional is. So we are able to provide you some of the best courses because of the amazing ecosystem, which I mentioned that it comes with a series of experts like Sandeep Vijayarakhan, who has been helping us in putting up programs which is relevant to the market, not just for today, but for the future. Uh, in, in data science and AI, we have, we have two masters program. In cybersecurity, we have another master's program, but along with that, a series of customized short-term programs in both the areas that which we offer. We also are launching a new program uh, at this, this particular webinar as well. So we would be excited to speak to you about that program as well. And uh, moving forward, let me take a minute to show you because all of us are in the, in the homes and uh, most of the campuses are locked down, but we would be proud to showcase you the kind of infrastructure that we have built for corporate programs. And these labs are available both online and offline, and we would love to welcome you to our campus to see this great infrastructure that we have. Uh, so for especially on the cybersecurity infrastructure, we are proud that we are the one of the pioneering universities which has a state of the art security operation center, which has uh, not just it's not just a uh, it not just a center for us, but it's a combination where we do research, we do experiments on how to defend your organizations from the threats that cyber cyber attackers are putting forth. And uh, all our classrooms are digitally connected. And of course, today I think that's not a, a new thing to all of you. 
but we are we we would uh, I, I think we have we have we have been pioneering this because almost four or five years back is what we have set up all these uh, facilities. So let me take a minute uh, to introduce Sandeep Vijayarakhavan. Uh, Sandeep Vijayarakhavan is the is one of the main reason or the the uh, the pillar of our cyber security program. He is a uh, currently a senior VP of cyber security and cloud and IT services at Teralogic. Plus he is also our chief mentor in cyber security. That means he has been uh, a single almost uh, no, as, a, as an important person in designing uh, the programs, not just on the master's program, but customized programs. He helps in delivery placements and various other research initiatives. He has been known as a crisis resolution expert with a leadership background and has been working with various uh, marquee companies currently with Terralogic, but previous to that he worked with various OEMs ranging from RSAs to PwC to so through PwC and other consulting works he has been used. He has been doing uh, a lot of uh, domain driven or industries industry agnostic consulting services of setting up cyber security operations and uh, being running a managed service uh, service vertical at Terralogic. He uh, the challenges that which is currently being faced is that everybody is connecting from home and everybody is connecting through cloud and various other uh, the, the no, rather we call it as multi cloud infrastructure. Now this is going to be a big challenge for organizations, especially the ones who are very, very uh, uniquely on the privacy as well as uh, uh, the security of the data that they protect. And this has been a great challenge and we believe that our programs which are designed to help you build the skill on developing cloud secured skill sets where you can put uh, in your resume and flaunt and say that we would you know we are we are uh, we are building that kind of professionals and uh, today's talk Sandeep is going to speak about how how what are the challenges definitely he would talk about but what are the best practices or what what are the ways that we can look at securing the cloud to ensure that your cyber attackers have been kept at a bay. So without uh, wasting much time from all of you, we again thank you for joining this program, this one hour webinar, and we look forward to a great participation. So we request two things, the, the people who are joining us through our YouTube or uh, uh, Facebook live, please keep uh, posting your uh, messages there. Somebody of us will curate and get the questions back to Sandeep. So Sandeep would uh, focus on his presentation about 45 minutes towards the last about 10 minutes or so, depending on the nature of the questions. We would uh, take it up in uh, take up the questions. So over to you Sandeep and looking forward to an amazing session as usual. Thank you Dr. Shino. Good evening all of you. Uh, well, I would like to start off the presentation by talking about some of the trends today in the cloud. So this is a source, uh, this is an IDC source uh, which talks about a few of the details about the adoption today, right? So about 85% of the organizations are using services from different clouds as of today. As of now that we speak, there are about 85% of the organization already using the services in some form, right? So you're not totally outside of, of the cloud uh, adoption, you are already using it in some form or the other. Either you have uh, certain accesses of applications which are on the cloud, uh, SaaS, SaaS based platforms that is available, right? Your organization have a lot of services rendering to you, right? These can be around in the areas of your HR or it could be also remote services that can be offered to your clients, the VDIs, most of it is today on the cloud. About 93% of the organization will use these services with multiple cloud providers. So you would not restrict it to just one cloud providers. You would go ahead and start using the cloud services of multiple cloud providers like the AWS, the Google. There are some private uh, players as well who offer cloud services. So there would be a mix of multiple uh, offerings that would be provided and these would be accessible to an individual organization to accept those services on the cloud. 
53% of the C-level executives are pushing a cloud first policy today, right? So you do not need to all the time look for your sources within the organization, right? Cloud first approach can be one of the mechanisms that would be available and that is a much more accessible. You can get things set up quicker and faster, much more secure for you to access, right? So cloud first is a policy that today the C-level executives are pushing for. I'd like to speak about uh, what the gardeners as well as the foresters talk about, right? So hybrid cloud solution will continue to drive the overall cloud adoption in India. Uh, you would have seen that we were a little slow in adoption, but then of late, if you see, there's a lot of adoption on the cloud already. Again, on the hybrid clouds are the future state where your compute and the storage for enterprises are available. They have gone the days when uh, the organization did not find cloud or the cloud storage secure for, for uh, holding the data or keeping the data right uh, in transit between the locations, that is the client locations all, as well as the organization location, right? So transferring data across cloud has been an adoption that is in place. Uh, right scales talks about organizations that are already running applications. There is least one uh, on the cloud, majority on the cloud, uh, very little on, on the hybrid environment or the ecosystems as of today. Multi-cloud, FI talks about multi-cloud enables the best cloud for the app strategy as well. So most of the application, if you look at even the banking applications, are today accessible on the cloud itself. Moving on, uh, let me give you an understanding and the perception that has evolved over the years, right? So from the year 2006 to 2010, a cloud offering or cloud adoption was not a key focus for organizations or enterprises, right? It was only around uh, 2011 onwards, there was some adoption on the cloud for dev and testing purpose, but obviously nothing on production, right? From 2013 onward, you would see that some of the production workloads moved into cloud, right? But there was always that question mark, how secure is it, okay? From about 2016 onwards, we started seeing a lot of adoptions on the cloud. Very little, uh, you know, inheritance of the IT infrastructure within the data centers. Most of the organizations started adopting it on the cloud itself, right? Now, from 2018 onwards, the concept was to utilize multiple cloud offerings put together, right? So this also brought in some complexities. We will talk about it. We'll touch base about it in the upcoming slides. The cloud transformation journey, if you look at right, uh, starting with the traditional IT where the dedicated physical homogeneous infrastructure was in place, right? Every component control uh, storage was added to the traditional IT infrastructure. So space was a constraint. The organization had to have that uh, uh, space within the organization or hosted in some kind of a data center to which they access. Connectivity was one of the major issues. You would have seen a lot of point-to-point -point connections, MPLS connections, right, which were complex in nature to manage, right? The more the number of connectivities, there are situations of downtimes, right? The skill sets, round the clock working, there is knock services on the clock working to keep up the uptime for the traditional IT. Now, we started evolving with that state, right? And the traditional IT started connecting and integrating to the private cloud, right? Sort of moving some of those workloads onto the private clouds, then moving into the public cloud. So this was much more adopted. And then now is more of the multi-cloud ecosystem and we started managing it centrally as well. That, that was one of the concerns, but then we've started managing well. The governance was one of the key concerns, but that is now well accepted and well managed with the organization. The future would of course be the hybrid. The, the current state, if you see, it is a combination of the traditional IT and private public cloud 
the future will have some of the footprints again on the traditional IT infrastructure and largely it would be on the public cloud. That is what we would envisage. That's how the future IT or the hybrid IT would look like. Manageability again would be centrally. There will be managed services organization which will be ex uh, extending their services, their services in operationalizing, also ensuring the security of the ecosystem where the hosted services is tendered to the organization. Some of the drivers that allowed us to adopt or the organizations to adopt the cloud. Flexibility and choices in the applications, right? Now, there were scenarios in, in the past where the organization had to purchase licenses, right? Today, these subscriptions are available at, at the cloud providers, right? So you can go to Google, you can look for a certain applications or a service which is offered by Google. You could also look at something which is in parity with Google on AWS or any other cloud providers like the Azure's and so on, right? So you need not have to have that multi-year contract with the OEMs because all of this or most of these applications, the SaaS-based applications are available on the cloud. You're extending your IT infrastructure, the resources of your IT from the on-premise infrastructure without much capital expense. You're not spending around day one, but you have a staggered spending over, over the years. And at any point, if you wish, you can always do a lift and shift to other ecosystem. You can bring it back to the traditional IT. If you look, that is a much more feasible option or viable option that is still in place. So all of these are possible today with, with the adoption of cloud, right? You're maximizing your returns on your existing uh, premises IT investment because most of it is moving onto the cloud. You were having the right balance between speed, innovation, and security. There was a time when we were not very sure of the kind of security that, that is in place or the controls in place. Today you can manage it. Today you can audit it completely, right? You have your own tenant which is secluded right without much of the interactions with the other tenants that is in place so you have a complete visibility and control of your applications of your controls and your crown jewels which are critical assets that is hosted on your cloud some of the other pointers which i would say migrate workloads as needed between private and public we spoke about that integrate your core businesses your systems and your records to enable interaction with customers so your interaction, I mean, we, we have federation models that is available where you interact with multiple clients. You can interact with multiple uh, applications, right? You do not need to look at the interoperability challenges, right? There are few, but then the most of it is addressed. Uh, there are mechanisms to address an interoperability within the cloud ecosystem as well, right? Need of an offsite location for business continuity. You do not need to look for a provider on an offsite location, you, you can move complete, you ha have your complete DR set up on a cloud. Let's say you have Bangalore as the location, which is your primary. You could have your DR at a location on, on the cloud. You can choose which location you would like to. So those flexibility is now available with the adoption. And these are some of the drivers on the cloud. With all this there, there are challenges, right? So we spoke about a few of them, right? Uh, the bigger challenge is, is, is managing, right? Governing it. Uh, as you increase in, in the footprints and multiple cloud scenarios, governance becomes a very critical you know, aspect. Security becomes very, very important because you have your users connecting to cloud, single cloud, multi-cloud. They connect from their home, their offices, right? So it is very important to understand from an identity perspective which user is doing what. If that user has been compromised, is the cloud open? All of these are, are a challenge, right? So centralizing govern and the governance along with the security policy becomes one of very important and a critical challenge. So we would definitely need scale resources. These are, I mean, from a control point of view, available on the cloud, but then manageability becomes that very important and challenging, Where, whereas we will look for like in the earlier days it was more of IT engineers than security engineers. Now we are looking at cloud security engineers as well to manage various clouds, right? Visibility and control. 
So this is, uh, as I spoke, very, very important for an organization. I mean, if I were to give you one example on the visibility side, at times so happen that the business keeps on, uh, you know, adding up resources or just having VMs set up on the cloud, and these can incur a lot of uh, bills, right? The monthly bills that can come. It can actually overwhelm what you would have either used as your you know, existing uh, infrastructure. It can go, it can overwhelm that bill, and that becomes a challenge. So managing that is is very very important, right? Multi multi cloud operations becomes much more complex because then the footprint is is on multiple uh, spaces. It would be on the Google, it would be AWS, Azure, private cloud. So it could be in multiple clouds. So managing that, operationalizing that becomes very, very difficult. From the security point of view, what is the approaches that, that can be dealt with, right? Uh, cloud security control, the review should be periodic, right? As you were doing in the past, these reviews were on the infrastructure. Now these reviews are required on the controls. When I talk about controls, these are firewalls and uh, the other controls that you look at, WAF and so on. These controls, the configurations on these controls have to be reviewed periodically. You would definitely need to do VA. Uh, PT becomes a little more challenging. So vulnerability assessment is, is very, very important both on, on the controls that is hosted uh, for your organization as well as the crown jewel that is uh, you know, adopted by the organization, right? The cloud management and the, man and the migration services. Now, this, this is also very important because you would migrate from, from one ecosystem to another ecosystem, right? So when you move it, how does your security, your policies of the organization be adopted on the cloud, right? The cloud BRBCP planning. This this is very important, right? So how do you get your compliances in state for the BCP DR uh, planning? The governance we spoke about and secure architecture. You've been spending a lot of time and efforts ensuring that your IT infrastructure, from the uh, from the architecture point of view, design point of view, is well set. But then how do you ensure that this is adopted on the cloud as well? So we will need to ensure that a proper architecture or a secure architecture is, is built up on the cloud as well. Monitoring, uh, most of the organization today either has in-house security operations or have extended that to pro providers, which are managed security services providers. So can they manage it? I mean, how many managed services organization today are skilled to monitor or uh, any cloud or cloud security parameters, right? It's, it's typically the standard logs, but the ways these logs are produced and ingested onto various systems and managed, which we call the incident management, response and remediation, right? So that adoption becomes very, very critical, and uh, we don't see much of the managed services provider offering, but the cloud providers do offer at additional cost that could also be looked at by the organization, right? CASB, the authentication part is very, very critical, right? From a user perspective, this is one of the area which, which organizations is very vigilant today. Talking about the managed services uh, uh, providers, rather, I would say, uh, what do they look for? What are the approaches that the managed services providers look, right? So they offer organizations today advisory support, right? They give you discovery assessment, uh, uh, baseline uh, or configurations review, all of that from an advisory point of view is offered by managed service provider. So organization, while they adopt cloud, they also need to accept the right uh, uh, mechanisms or methodologies from a managed services point of view, either in-house or extended to a managed services provider who could provide you these advice, advisories. Visibility and control, again, uh, single plane, single dashboard should be available for the organization, right? From a governance perspective, modeling, both asset modeling, threat modeling, right? The application uh, deployment life cycles, right? All of it should be well controlled by the managed services within the organization or externally. Optimization is, is very important, right? While you migrate your cloud or use uh, third party tools, uh, multiple frameworks are available today while, while you optimize it as well. The modeling we spoke about, the blueprint creations, very, very important, right? And 
most important for any business is the cost, right? So the cost optimization should also be looked at. So this is what uh, we would ensure or we would look at from a KPI point of view from any uh, managed services provider on the cloud. Uh, some of the benefits that we speak about, right? So it is agility, efficiency, and security in control, right? So when you are deploying your application, it should be seamless, right? Add change deletions, right? Whatever makes changes you need to do on the cloud, that should be pretty seamless and agile, right? Application workflow when you move to multiple clouds, that should be you know agile as well, right? When you do this, the efficiency, both uh, at, at the IT level, the user level, that efficiency should be maintained. Optimizing of the workloads, you, you cannot overwhelm on the cloud because cost becomes a very important aspect, right? And there has to be some benchmark that you would look for. Control specific, you would look for policy-based governance. Uh, you're interconnecting with the networks, the isolation, so the MAC or, or mechanisms to that you adopt to well, you're remediating, you're bringing down certain system that can be compromised is something which you'll have to control it, right? You comply with uh, FIPS or uh, any any other regulations requirements that you need that should also be in place. Uh, also apply the financial controls if it's a BFSI or a you know public sector bank when they are adopting the cloud. So those uh, uh, compliances or those controls have to be adopted. So that is around the security and the control aspect of it. Uh, this is as a uh, you know viewpoint that you would look for some of the uh, applications on the left hand side that that's av available and uh, you would get to on the right hand side you could get to deploy it in any in infrastructure data centers cloud public cloud and so on right so you would look at a life cycle and then um, from a management point of view and deployment point of view centrally do it which whereby the managed services gets a complete visibility of it the governance is is intact and while you're reporting reporting mechanism becomes very very important for organization that is also centrally driven so this is a multi cloud management uh, viewpoint which is showcased and that's where most of the organization would like to extend to i will uh, stop for a couple of minutes if there are any questions uh, dr shino uh, dr vaibo if there are any questions to be taken so that, that was a quite a sharp and uh, brief presentation. So we would uh, request those who are attending online, please post your queries if you have any. And this is a very brief introduction to do. That is the purpose of this webinar. Uh, one of the question which is coming up is that, uh, especially on the multi cloud, uh, how would you manage the the, the different uh, the, the cost aspect of it is uh, one of the question which is coming. Right, so uh, while I talk about this, this slide, right, managing with multiple cloud, A, that is a bit uh, complex scenario already, but uh, while you adopt to cloud, that flexibility should also be available where you connect to multiple cloud and offer that services either to your customers or within the user base, right? Uh, cost with each of the clouds, the, the mechanism adopted are slightly different. So what happens is while you're doing this, it cannot be completely silo. You will have to implement certain mechanism, right? Certain uh, uh, applications or some uh, you know pointers that are available, right? You could look at some of the providers uh, uh, like Prozimo, which actually uh, connects uh, the ecosystem, the organization ecosystem to multiple cloud providers. And there is a visibility of uh, from a cost perspective, from the usability perspective and uh, the governance perspective, which is also reported. And that is where you would look for the cost aspect as well. There are uh, configurations that we do while uh, say example, one of the cloud where you hosted your application you would see the utilization is going high, the cost is going high, then there is a threshold set. Now that threshold starts sending out the alerts. These alerts are sent to the business or it could also be sent to the one who's managing the multi-cloud environment. 
So it is not that you wait for the end of the cycle from each of these service providers to share you the bills because there are mechanisms, there are tools and technologies today that can be adopted. When you look at a multi cloud environment, it is a complex scenario. It is only enterprises who would largely adopt to, right? So while they adopt, there are mechanisms they would also look from various providers. The managed services provider offer these services also, whereas it, it has a single pane that can offer that cost change, right? In certain cases where one of the cloud provider, the costing increases, then they would alert it and ensure that it doesn't go beyond the threshold and that is maintained. So adopt services from cloud providers or the managed services provider or adopt a tool which could actually have visibility into it. There are certain cloud providers who also claim to have visibility of with the multi uh, ecosystem on the other cloud providers as well. I haven't seen much of the adoption there, but then there are some of the platforms like Cosimo that you can look for, they do it pretty well. OK, uh, there are a couple of questions coming on the career path of cloud security. So how one should go about uh, building a career in cloud security? Cloud security, OK. So if you uh, look at the, the objective and uh, the presentation that uh, we are doing now, so there are two options that two aspect of it that we are covering. One is the cloud aspect and the other one is the security aspect, right? Uh, Breva Grace, as of today, uh, we are launching the uh, programs around uh, adoption of both cloud as well as security. Now, from a career growth point of view, what, what can you look for? Now, if you are already uh, working in an organization where uh, your role is defined from a cyber security point of view, it becomes easy for you to adopt uh, the cloud security uh, you know, programs like that what we are offering today or there are many other certification programs that is already available. These prog programs are available by AWS, by Azure and so on. And uh, cloud certifications or the architect certification or the cloud security certification can be taken up. And this would allow you to start uh, building your skill sets around cloud security as well. You would, uh, let's say, let's say there's a SOC engineer, right? Currently managing the environment of an organization, the control that is uh, implemented with the organization. Now, what he looks at, he looks at uh, a similar incident on the cloud whereby uh, he would have to respond and uh, remediate it, OK? Or he will have to raise the incident. The mechanism or, or the SOP that is adopted is still going to be the same, right? But what you get on a cloud, the, the kind of logs that you receive, right? may be different from what you would have received from a standard control, right? So let's say give an example on AWS, you got the CloudWatch and the Cloud Cry. So you look at those messages, right? You could still continue to ingest that in uh, various platforms, the SIM platforms, right? Or the analytics platform, and then start driving the incident, right? So while I give you the example, it is uh, not very straightforward for you to start adopting a, a career on cloud security, right? You need to build those skill set. You need to understand uh, the infrastructure on the cloud, right? It could be different. The concepts can be very different, right? Than what we would have seen from a traditional IT point of view. So look at some of uh, these programs. Uh, try adopting it, right? Look in for some of the projects that, that is also offered. Build your POCs, right? You could always have your staging environment. Build your POCs and start testing it, right? The VA, the PT that you would do on infrastructure, the VA that you would do on the cloud may look similar, but then the uh, the way you have an approach towards it is, is going to be a lot different, right? So you will have to be agile. You will have to start adopting and you will have to understand the cloud uh, much in a, in a conceptual way before you start moving your careers into a cloud security architect or maybe a, a CRO kind of a role which is more to do with compliance and so on. So, on. so that is something which you will have to start looking at. Okay, There is another interesting question. I think this is a 
Uh, this is a question which uh, I, I am not sure whether we got it right because we have a, a completely a different set of perspectives uh, which we are getting. So here the question says from a poly cloud or a multi cloud or a cloud security professional, how do I move from uh, that professional to a software engineer? Because most of our participants come from a software engineer and they add the skill set of a cloud security. Now, uh, this participant would want to see how to move how to move from a cloud security or a multi cloud professional to a software engineer. Is it is it uh, the question is correct? Right. Well, uh, being a security professional myself, I wouldn't like to lose somebody who's already built his skill set on uh, on cyber or cloud security to start building a skill set on software engineering, but they could be a reason. I'm sure they would be there are a lot of startups today, right? And a lot of uh, software engineering uh, efforts are put in and a lot of IPs developed, right? So in a way, a very interesting question, but then I would say since you've already have a background of cyber security and you want to get into software engineering, a good move, right? I'm, I'm sure there is an objective. There's a business objective towards it. And uh, if you're keen, I mean, all of these verticals, you know, any day you can move into them and you can build your skill set around it, right? Uh, the track is very, very different. I mean, look from an, I, I could look at somebody from moving from IT to, to cyber security to a cloud security, but then uh, already who's invented that wheel moving to software engineering. Right, it's definitely a, a very challenging career move, but yes, we do look for some of those software engineers also. And uh, I mean, I would say all the best. Uh, I mean, it's it's a one uh, way to also get into some of these startups or or build those startups uh, with some niche IPs, and, and I'm sure you could make a great sale out of it. Yeah, it, it's one of the options. Okay, yeah. Another interesting question which is coming up is how can we identify real time threats in cloud and what are the different tools to detect real time threats on cloud? OK, I'll just uh, uh, step back and I'll, I'll try to explain uh, the threat scenario, right? So looking at the real time threats, OK? Now one is you would of course go connect to each of the controls and these controls be it the cloud the controls on the cloud or on on the environment that is your infrastructure right you have a mechanism to start uh, ingesting the information right so one of the ways that you would do is get those logs coming into correlations or correlate or sim solutions or analytic solutions that would allow you to do, I would not say real time, but very uh, near real time detection of your incidents, right? Now, uh, if you would see from a cloud point of view, if you could tap into some of the traffic, which is uh, traffic on the networks, right? And look at the indicators, that indicators which would change, uh, let's say the performance parameters, it could change the, the manner in which data is, is shared or data is exfiltrated, right? If you can map to multiple uh, phases of an attack kill chain, where you could do a, a modeling, right? And uh, if you could detect that, then you would do a near real time detection of an incident, right? Uh, there are ways by virtue of which a certain indicator can be qualified to be an incident or an attack straight away, right? But this in some form has to be brought to systems for monitoring, right? So these monitoring mechanisms are available on the cloud. If I were to give an example of uh, Azure, so Azure, you can adopt uh, the, the Sentinel, Sentinel as one of the offering, right? which could allow you to look at the threat as it occurs or you can integrate that uh, with with tools or or some of the applications uh, such as the splunk right which could be integrated straight away from the cloud 
provider itself, right? Or if you look at uh, some of the services on security, which is like the APT services that is offered by these cloud providers, can give you an insight of the threats and the attack that is happening, right? So these are some certain mechanism that you can adopt on the cloud as well. I think more or less these are the questions and a uh, lot of questions on the careers been asked again. So we would uh, uh, we would want to also. All of you to look at this program, which is merging cybersecurity and especially cloud is one of the integral part of this program. So we offer this two years MTech or MSc program in cybersecurity with all the approvals, AICT, UGC and uh, multiple industry certifications. And this all of this comes from uh, uh, the in terms of training or in terms of mentoring would be provided by uh, practitioners and thought leaders in cybersecurity area. And uh, all our participants, we have seen great transformation in their career in lateral placements and movements and career transitions from a non cybersecurity uh, or from a non cyber background moving on to a cybersecurity professional. So please do look at uh, the cybersecurity program listed in our website and uh, connect with any of us to see more about this program. Yeah, so as we mentioned, uh, uh, the learning happens when you real time experience or uh, create a staging environment or a sandboxing environment where we you can practice all these things. That's why we have a dedicated security operation center which uh, which captures these uh, somebody was asking about uh, threat detection on live environment, so uh, you would get to get to experience and simulate this and also cyber range as a hyper simulator where you could see the flowing traffic, uh, emulate an attack and uh, create defensive strategies. All that is possible on a on a hyper simulator environment, which is called as a cyber range. So it's all part of this program and that is why these programs are created for a working professional with at least about uh, on an average experience about 10 plus years who would want to move on to senior levels in cybersecurity. And if you see the trimester structure, it is a fast paced trimester structure which is moving from fundamentals to advanced intelligence and threat hunting. Anything starting from your basic infrastructure security to OS security, application cloud, or uh, moving on to incident response management, with, which includes SIM or SOAR technologies. And then, uh, if at all the threat happens, how would you do threat hunting and threat uh, intelligence along with forensics? How do you create reports? And also, we have merged one of our core area, which is sec analytics. So how would you build analytics capabilities for cybersecurity? And that these are some of the very, very niche skills that which we feel that our programs would help the participants to get uh, build the skills on. In terms of uh, projects that a series of projects have been uh, have been done by our participants with the help of very, very efficient uh, senior mentors in our program. So if you see the next slide, you would see that a series of uh, pro projects which are so we, we do not uh, uh, force fit anyone on the project. It depends on your career path already or your interest that you may pick and choose a project which is adding value to your resume, which would help you for lateral placements ranging from building application security or it could be cloud security projects or it could be the, the IoT or edge based security or it could be merging MLAI techniques on cybersecurity or projects like uh, uh, fancy projects like build a SOC on on your mobile, right? So these are the interesting projects that people are building as part of this program and that becomes their turning point while they are getting interviewed for to become the cybersecurity professional and move their career into that area. So we would uh, request all of you to connect with us more if you would want to uh, look at cybersecurity as a profession and move your career to that area. And uh, we are also so glad uh, that we are launching a new course, which is again a master's degree on uh, specifically designed for cloud. This program is going to be an MSc in cloud architecture and security. 
This is going to be in association with almost all the cloud providers today, but mainly with the Amazon Web Service as well as Microsoft. And uh, the program is very, very intensely planned with a lot of industry support as well as real time learning on building your cloud capabilities, which is one of the most niche skills today. Right, uh, and uh, it's not going to go out because uh, this kind of working from home as well as cloud enabled services are going to grow in near future. So we would want all of you to maybe connect with us at your convenience and then check out what is that we offer to help you build a better career for, for you. So if, we, if you would uh, go to the next slide, that's a, that's a little thank you from all of us. First of all, let me take a minute to thank Sandeep Vijayarakhavan for his uh, great help, not just on the webinar, but also helping us building programs, which is helping people to change their lives positively. And uh, for a webinar, which is very, very uh, important today, especially for those who are trying to manage, I think on-prem is almost uh, a non-entity now. And every one of us, if you are in the IT profession, that you are looking at uh, managing the cloud environment for your operations and building your business. So it has been an excellent uh, opportunity to hear from you, Sandeep, because from your experience, what are the challenges from your money services uh, operations that you manage various clients that uh, it's, it's great to know that the kind of challenges today are almost getting uh, managed. And uh, we wish that your uh, your company, especially TerraLogic and the team uh, does extremely well in the space. While we also thank you for mentoring our participants and also helping us design futuristic programs.